this video we'll dive into a quick and easy tutorial on how to make a white background transparent using DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. The first method is by using the Multiply Blend Mode. This is a very quick hack and works extremely well with black graphics on a white background. Here we have a loading animation on a white background. When we apply this clip in Multiply Blend Mode over a yellow background, the result will be exactly what we need. To demonstrate how to achieve this, I'll use the Alt key and drag it to make a copy of the clip. Select the clip and make sure the Inspector panel is open. In the Inspector panel, under the Composite section, we can change the Blend node, also known as the Composite node in Resolve. By setting it to Multiply, the white will become transparent and our loading animation will show on top of the yellow background. As mentioned, this works very well with black on white. If you have a regular clip, like this lady walking into the screen, the multiply and blend mode will not be ideal. So let's check the next method, which is applying a luma key in luminosity or saturation in the fusion tab. Here is our animation again, followed by the animation with the Luma key applied. It does a pretty decent result for this clip. Let's check our lady with the white background. It's not perfect, but still decent. We do have some white ghosting and as you might notice her shirt has also become transparent. So let me quickly copy this clip and switch over to the Fusion tab. While the Media 1 node is selected, Press Shift Space, then type in LK. Press Enter while the Luma Key item is selected to add a Luma Keyer node. This will add the Luma Keyer node between the Media In 1 and the Media Out 1 node. When we select this new node, we can now use the Inspector panel to configure the settings of this node. First thing we need to do is to change the channel to Saturation. We now have a semi-transparent lady. By adjusting the low and the high point, we can fine-tune the mask. To further fine-tune it, we also need to adjust the contract, expand and the gamma sliders. It's not perfect yet. As you see, her shirt is also gone. Let's quickly switch to the edit page and see our result. That looks awful. Not exactly what we're looking for. Let's go back to the Fusion tab to fix it. Instead of using the Saturation channel, let's use the Luminous channel for the Luma key. It really depends on your clip, sometimes the saturation will work perfect, but on this clip the Luminous channel will have a better result. When using the Luminous channel, we need to invert the map. By adjusting the settings, we can get a pretty decent result, especially when we contract the mat. Keep in mind that because we inverted the mat, we need to expand it in order to contract the actual mat. Let's switch back to the edit page and see our result. This looks much better. We even fixed the issue with her white shirt. Pretty awesome. The next method is very similar, but this time we're going to use the alternative Luma Keyer in Fusion. Here is our loading clip again. And this method gets very decent results for this kind of clips. But how about our lady in the white background? It looks pretty good, so let's check out this method. After I duplicate the clip, we go again to the Fusion tab. This time we're going to add the Luma Keyer without the LKJ text. Instead of using a channel, this Luma Keyer allows you to select the colors to be removed which in our case will be white, but actually it could be any color. Once we select the white background color, we can use the sampler with the minus to remove color variations to be visible. In this case, I can remove the colors from her face and shirt to make sure these don't get removed. With the help of the matte finesse, we can fine tune the matte to our liking. As you can see, this note has more options to fine tune the matte and just experiment to see what works best for your clip. The white clip slider can really help to filter out the whites. Also, don't forget to check the second page of options where you probably would max out the shadow and the midtone sliders. After spending some time in fine-tuning the settings for your clip, 
you probably would get a usable result. Time for the final method, which in my opinion is the easiest way of removing white as you don't need to switch over to the fusion tab. It's by using the OpenFX 3D keyer effect on a clip in the timeline. The results for the loading animation are again pretty good, but let's check our lady and also here the results are really nice. I'll duplicate the clip and then from the effects panel under the open effects folder I can search for 3D which brings up the 3D keyer. If the effects panel is not showing up on your screen use the effect button from the top toolbar to enable it. We can now drag and drop this effect on our clip. The settings of the effect can now be modified from the inspector panel under the effects tab. The 3D keyer is very similar in use as the Luma keyer we used in the previous method. We can select the color to be removed. Make sure to switch to the open effects mode in the viewer before you select the white color. Then we can use the droppers to add or remove colors from our mat. Make sure to check the options in the behavior section. Especially the color space can have a big difference depending on your clip. Most of the time, the HSP space works better from my experience. We have the same matte finesse controls as the previous method, which allows us to fine tune the end result. After spending some time with these settings, I think this looks pretty good. So these are the most popular ways of removing a white background, but there are many other ways to remove it. For example, you could also use a magic mask or go crazy in the fusion tab to get that perfect result. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before leaving. Until the next video.